Hello, 7th graders. I'm here to help you virtually as I'm out of the classroom with your worksheet for today. You're going to be looking at proportions and uh, you're going to be looking at dividing fractions. You can see a little mark there. Line, segments, and angles. All easy. If you follow my directions, you'll have no trouble. Here's problem number one, and we're going to go ahead and solve this proportion by doing the cross multiplication. Okay, as you see that, we'll do that and rewrite it. So I'm going to take the variable and um, deal with that first. We'll say b times 10. We can show that, which would be 10b. Put our equal sign, and then we'll say 12 times 25. 12 times 25, when you do that math, it actually ends up being 300. Okay, we'll put our equal sign, and we still have 10 b over here. Now we need to get b by itself, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of this 10 over here. And the only way that we can do this is doing the inverse of what math it's doing. We can see since the 10 is next to the b, it is doing multiplication. The inverse, or the opposite of multiplication, is division. So we're going to divide both sides by 10. Makes it easy. This equals 1, so b is left, and then you have 300 divided uh, by 10 which is just removing one zero, you have 30. That's left. There's your answer. Let's do number two now. And we can cross multiply and then solve the algebraic equation. I'm going to start with the variables again. So that's the five and the s. This is, if you're looking at number two, you can see it's three fifths equals s over 20. So I'm going to multiply the five times the s and I get five s equals three times 20. If we do the math, we'll see that we have 5s, oops, let me redo that, we have 5s equals 60. Now we can go ahead and divide this out. We're going to divide both sides by 5 to get the variable by itself, so we'll have s equals 12. 12 is your answer for the variable, s equals 12. I'm skipping down to number eight. You can do the other ones. Um, similar um, um, problems, cross multiplying and solving for the variable. So let's set this one up. And we can do the variable first, which is going to be 94n equals, and then we'll say 88 times 4.7. Now we just need to do the math, and then we can solve for n. 88 times 4.7, I just used my calculator. You could do that too if you'd like to, not a problem here. And that equals 413.6. And then we'll have 94 on this side. You can continue to use your calculator. You know that you're going to divide both sides by 94 to get in by itself. So 94 on this side also. And that actually leaves n alone on the left-hand side. And our answer, which I'm going to put in red, is 413.6 divided by 94 actually turns out nicely to be 4.4. So there's your answer. Please remember to show all of your work. That is important when solving problems. Let's do this. This is cross-multiplying of uh, these two um, ratios here. We have 4 over x equals 16 over 28. I'm going to multiply the x times 16 as I cross-multiply from left to right. So that's 16x equals, and then 4 times 28. 4 times 28 actually equals 112. We'll put our 16x on this side. We need to get that by itself, so let's divide both sides by 16. And when we do that math, you can use your calculator or just follow along right here. We know that on the left-hand side, x is left by itself, and 112 divided by 16 is actually 7. So here's your answer. Booyah! Numbers 11... Through 13, you're going to divide fractions. Remember the term, or I should say the little saying, keep, switch, and flip. That means the reciprocal. So we're going to keep the first fraction. 
we'll keep it four sevenths. We're going to switch the sign to multiplication, and we're going to flip the uh, right fraction. So we'll have the numerator become the denominator, and the denominator become the numerator. And we actually just do the math. What's 4 times 10? That's 40. What is 7 times 7? That is 49. Can we reduce this? Is there a number that goes in both the top and the bottom? There is not. So your answer is 40 over 49. Kazinga! Okay, this is number 16. You're supposed to take a look at these items, and you need to decide which one is a segment, which one is a line, and which one is a ray. You might need to look these up online. You can Google it or look in your math book, but you need to choose which is which. Is it going to be a segment, a line, or a ray? Is A a segment? Is B a segment? Is C a segment? Which ones are they? You decide. Okay, so 18 and 19 need your attention on angles. Remember, an acute angle is anything less or is 90 degrees or less. An obtuse angle is anything that is over 90 degrees. So look at number 18. It's saying if ROS, so if you look at where R is, there's a dot there. There's a plotted point on that line. R, the middle or the vertex of that straight angle, or sorry, not straight angle, of, of the angle um, ROS um, is O, and then you have S, and that is up above R. That angle is acute. And then you see the other one, which is TOR, is straight, starting from the left, going T to O to R. You can see it here. If I point it to you, this is T, O, and R. This is a straight angle. That's 180 degrees. What kind of angle is TOS? So T, O, to S. We know that R, O, S is acute. We know that T, O, R is straight. But what about T, O, S? You need to decide what that is. Same with number 19. It's asking and telling you that you have T, O, S. So T, O, and S, they're obtuse. Okay, that's over 90 degrees. You can see that the O is actually right here in the middle. That's the vertex of both this angle and this straight angle and also this acute angle. So if TOS is obtuse and TOR, so that's T, O, and R, that's a straight angle, is, a str is, is um, right there. What kind of angle is ROS? Okay, you need to go ahead and define that. All right, I'm going to skip down to number 22. The other ones, you're supposed to decide, uh, like 20 and 21, is it a prime number or is it a composite? Remember, a prime has only two factors, one and itself, and a composite has more than two factors. 1,200 is definitely a composite number, so we need to find the prime factorization. So the first thing that I like to do is just cut it in half. So what is 1,200 divided by 2? And if you do that, you will get 600. 600 is another composite number. We can divide that in half again. 600 divided by 2 gives you 300. So put down here, and then we'll put 300 over here. Can we divide 300 by an even number? We cannot, but we can definitely divide it by 3. And that means there's going to be 103s. Now we're back to an even number. We can divide 100 by 2 and get 50. Okay, and 50 divided by uh, 2 and get 25. And we'll keep dividing this down. Now we can do 5 times 5. I'm going to put that right over here. 5 times 5. Now we've just figured out the prime factorization. I want to circle these for you in orange. These are the prime factors. 2, 2, 3, 2, 2, 5, and 5. And then I want you to write the prime factorization. Your prime factorization is going to be 2 times 2 
times 2. Oops, do that again. And times 2 times 3 times 5 times 5. If you wrote that in exponent form, how many 2s do we have? We have 4 2s, so that's 2 to the 4th power times 3 times how many 5s do we have? We have 2 of those, so that's 5 to the 2nd power. This is prime factorization of 1,200 written in exponent form. All right, children, you have just got a nice start on your worksheet. There's a couple of problems you will have to do on your own, but hopefully my guidance has helped you get through most of this. If you still have any trouble, I can help you on Monday, but I think you'll be good to go to get this all done and correct. All right. Ooh, see you later.